Okay, so let's talk about something else here. So Aerial Rider has what they call a tank bag. Let me see if I can point down the bike here. Cut my head off, that's okay, it's ugly anyway. It's called a tank bag, and it goes right here, right? I got one in my hand, and it goes right here. They call it a tank bag, even though there's no tank, but I guess, you know, when you put it on there, it looks like a, like a motorcycle tank. Aerial Rider is sold out. Uh, I sent him an email. Uh, when are you getting these back in? We don't know. They have no idea. So I do a little, little digging, a little rooting around on eBay and YouTube, and you know, I learn a few things, and I come to find out this bag. Let's see if I can show you the name on it. I don't know how you say this. It's An Anmelu Amilau Amilau. I don't know how you would say it. Obviously, it's made in China. <laughs> So, so what? So is the bike. Um, it's the exact same bag as Aerial Rider sells. Same price, same cost. Uh, the only thing is, is Aerial Rider's got their really cool logo right here. I wished I could have got that, but they have no idea where they're going to come in. So I just said, you know what? I'm just going to buy this one. Um, it's pretty cool. It's got this, you know, bungee on the top here. You can put your gloves under there or whatever. Um, it's got a a rain fly over the zipper, which I think is kind of a neat touch, you know, so it kind of seals the zipper up from, from the weather. Um, when you open it up, um, it's got this divider, and you can, it just Velcros in. You can place this divider anywhere in here. Um, it's got a rain fly, so if you do get caught in the rain and you've got something that's sensitive in here, electronics, whatever, uh, you can cover this, you know, put this rain fly over it that covers it. Um, so that's kind of a neat thing. So um, I got a couple of bungee clips here i don't know what these are for but um the ones on the bottom are, are how you attach it to the to the frame you got two here and then this one velcros um, this is going to go probably around around the stem and to hold it onto the front of the bike to keep it from sliding back so i'm going to put this on what's going to go in here um my bike lock i got a i got a bike lock that you know just so i can secure at work just to keep people from walking away with it uh, it's going to be stored indoors when I go to work, um, so it'll be out of the weather, and, you know, it's just, all the lock does, it keeps honest people honest. If they want to get your bike, they're going to get your bike. They're going to cut the lock off with a portable grinder, whatever the case may be, but this just, it's going to, it's, it's, it's going to draw attention to them if it's indoors at my work, um, and it's just going to keep the honest people honest. So my bike lock's going to go in here, um, I'm going to get a patch kit. And then, of course, the tool bag is going to go in here with the extra screws. I just think that's really cool that it came with all those. And it's got some little, you know, it's got reflective piping around it. And there's reflective stuff here. I think that's all. That's pretty cool. And a carry handle. So if you do want to take it off, you can just carry it. You know, that's kind of a nice little touch, too. So I'm going to pause and put this on and show you what it looks like. Did it pause? No. Come on. Okay, so I got the tank bag on, and I got all the goodies in it. Everything except the patch kit, because I ordered one of those. I don't have it in yet. I got one in one of my other bikes, but I don't want to take it out. I want to leave it in there. I don't want to have its, its own patch kit. So, um, you know, I got the tank bag on. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, another thing I forgot to mention, the kickstand on this bike is really cool because it's back far enough to where when you push it backwards and the pedals roll backwards, they're not going to hit the kickstand and get locked up. You know, if you notice, you know, a lot of bikes you've had over the years, you go to move them around in the garage or whatever, you go to back them up, and that pedal will come around and it'll hit the kickstand and then it gets locked up. This one won't do that. The pedals will go all the way around and they won't hit, they won't hit the kickstand. Um, the kickstand itself, let's see if, if I can show you here. The kickstand itself is pretty beefy, and you can hear it. it, it it's got a nice spring, it's all metal, so it's a real nice, nice kickstand. The only thing I did is I made sure the two screws that hold it on were tight. Um, I've got it hooked up to the charger. When it came out of the box, it had uh, four out of five bars, so it did have some charge to it. So I got it on the charge right now, I'm just going to you know, charge it up fully before I you know, do any playing around with it. So this is its first charge. Uh, as far as I'm considered, uh, it is 
far as I'm concerned, the bike is it's all assembled and ready to go. Pedals are tight. Um, everything is as it's supposed to be. You know, the, the back brake, I don't know. I don't know if they need to be bled or if there's just some travel in this lever. Oh, wait, it's true there. All right, there's a little tiny Allen screw on this brake, on the brake lever. And it seems what's happening is, is I can move it, and until it gets to there, it doesn't make contact. So it's not making contact with the master cylinder until like half the travel is gone. So I could probably turn that little screw in and adjust some of that to where I can get it to, uh, to engage that cylinder a little easier. The front one is not bad. It makes contact pretty quick. So, um, or it turns on, man, I dig that. This, this thing is supposed to be Everybody that, I, that I've seen on YouTube that has tested this thing has just said that it's a beast. It, it, it is. When you give it the, the throttle, it just gets up and goes. So I, I think this thing is going to be fun. I think it's going to make my commute back and forth to work enjoyable. It's like one of those things where you can have a crappy day at work and jump on your moped and get a year-to-year -year grin and you can forget all about work and all your troubles will just melt away. So. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. So, at any rate, uh, thanks for uh, putting up with me. And you know, like I said, I'm not a YouTube vlogger. Uh, I, I'm still learning my GoPro camera here. I don't really have it mastered yet. Um, I'm, I'm still kind of learning everything as far as that goes. So, thank you for putting up with me. And uh, you know, maybe you'll you'll hear from me again. So that's all I got for today. And I'll say goodbye. Bye bye. All right, so here are some of the accessories I've been getting, and um, I'm getting ready to change the handlebars. So I have, I got a new uh, handlebar mount, a new stem mount, because you can see this one is smaller in diameter. It's 20, for a 22 millimeter bar or a 7 8 bar. I got a couple of sets of grips here. I didn't like these. They're a little too short. Even with my small hands, they're still... A little on the small side so I got these ones here these are a little bigger and they're a little softer and I kind of like those these grips better uh, they're how do I say it a little more grippy um, compound so you know this was the stock aerial grips and they're nice grips they're nice looking grips but they are I don't know they get kind of slippery you know because it's like a vinyl grip um, so I got a couple of tubes for the tires, and obviously I, I got the tires, real nice tires. These are uh, Shinkos, uh, 244s, they call them Golden Boys. Um, and then I got these pretty cool looking decals, and you can see that they, you know, they make, they go on the rim itself, and it's, in a, and it's a reflector. Um, because the tires I'm taking off there, you know, the reflective rim on that is going to be gone and hey, if I'm out riding at night, I want to be seen. So I got this uh, nice reflector pack. Okay, and you can see that they're not real wide, so they're going to fit on the rims real nice. Um, I'm going to be mounting this milk crate on the back to carry my stuff when I'm commuting back and forth to work. My thermos, and my lunch, and my backpack, and I don't like wearing a backpack. I just carry my gear in it. And then I got these. These are really cool. These um, these are actually for rad bikes, and I found these of all places on uh, what was it? Etsy. And uh, the, the nice little plastic things, and the little squares are made to go right into the squares in the bottom of the of the milk crate. So once you put these in, it's just a matter of you know putting a hole. A bolt through it and bolting this thing onto the back of the bike you don't even need a rack uh, you don't need to bungee cord it down it'll be you know much more rigid much uh, more solid and then I got a you know a stretchy cargo net thing to go over the top of it actually that came in a two-pack I found that on Amazon I got a pair of BMX bars here but it's only a six inch rise so from here to the top of the bar here it's only six inches and it would have only given me you know another inch or two over what the stock bike had so uh, I, I'm not going to use these I'll probably just resell these I don't even know if I'm going to go through the hassle of sending them back I'll just sell them on Craigslist or something like that 
Um, I got another set of bars coming that uh, I think are going to work much better. So, excuse my handheld there. I'm walking around the shop. So, I took, um, I took all the controls off, the handlebars, and I'm getting ready to, you know, swap the handlebars out. But I flipped the bike over so that I can do the tires. It's going to be, you know... <coughs> I'm used to working on bicycles when I put them in a bike stand. I got a real nice park bicycle stand that I work on. Well, there's no way you can hold this bike in it. So um, for me right now, I'm just using the, <laughs> the box that it came in to keep it kind of somewhat clean and uh, protect the seat because it's sitting on the seat. And I flipped it over and now I'm getting ready to do the tires. So I'm going to be pulling the tires off and uh, doing those one at a time so this is something that most people don't get to see is the bottom of their bike so this is uh it's kind of cool and i'm getting ready to start customizing it and making it mine all right so i'm gonna put you on pause here so here you can see got the new tires on Nice Shenkos, big heavy duty tires. They're awesome. And I got the reflective rim strips on. They're, they're yellow, so they go real well with you know all the yellow that's on the bike. Yellow and gold. Same thing here on the front. Get the front tire on, rim strip on. I have a new handlebar stem on. And I'm just waiting on the handlebars to come so I can put the handlebars back on it. I got all the controls just kind of hanging here on both sides. As soon as the handlebars come in, I can throw them right on. Alright, so this is, this is also something else that's going to be going in here. This is a battery. Um, gives me 12 volt out. Gives me... USB uh, gives me an on off, gives me a charge indicator, and this is going to fit right here. Okay, so what's this going to do for me? Well, it's going to give me um, power to run some auxiliary lights, which I'll be mounting on here, and it's also going to give me a USB. So if I want to run uh, the nav on my phone and not kill the battery, I can do that. And not kill the battery on the bike so it doesn't draw off the bike in any way so this uh, velcro partition still works just fine um, even with doing the upgrade on the bike so that's going to allow me to get my my foldy lock oops excuse me pardon me i'm carrying the tripod handheld here so my foldy lock will go in here my my tire pump will go in here And once I get all these accessories in here, this is the toolkit that came with the bike, right? And remember, it also gave me all these extra nuts and bolts. That's a pretty cool thing. So this is all going to go in here. My tire patch kits will go in here. I like that they give you this little bag. All right, that's pretty cool. So, this, all of this stuff fits in here, and I still have room for more. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this, how this came out. So, now the battery thing here, this is going to be my next upgrade. I'm waiting on one part to come in, and then you're going to see what that's all about. Now this is in a... Uh, 11 amp hour battery at 12 volt so that should last <laughs> a long time with the LED lights that I'm going to be running on this because they don't draw much of anything at all so this is going to be pretty cool alright so I'm going to say goodbye for a little while I'm waiting on this other part it should be here any minute I just ordered it off of Amazon yesterday it's supposed to be out for delivery so the Amazon delivery guy should be here any moment Okay, so the first thing that I did is I took the bag off and I emptied all the contents out of it and I laid it on top of a, a file folder.
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a template out of this file folder. I'm going to make sure that the template fits inside the bag the proper way so that if I screw something up, I'm just going to screw up this paper template and I can always make another one. So I just used a Sharpie and I traced around it. Um, and so that gives me this. And I can kind of fine tune it a little bit now. And uh, I'll cut it out with a pair of scissors and see how it fits. Now I want this to fit inside of the bag and I'm going to make two pieces of this. Eventually I'm going to cut out of that black HDPE plastic. Um, but like I say, if I'm going to mess something up, I'm going to mess up this pattern that I'm making first. Then I'm not going to be, you know, too concerned about it. Excuse the rolling lines in the camera. It's the LED lights in my shop that cause that. And I can't seem to get it to stop. But, um, so there's, I'm going to cut this out. And I'll make this template. And then I'll cut it out of the plastic. Alright, so this is what I got so far on my tank bag modification. Um, and the fellow that did this before me, uh, that I saw this and got inspired this from, it was his name is on YouTube, is Red Zone. Uh, he doesn't do just, you know, uh, e-bike stuff or aerial rider stuff. He does a lot of stuff, kind of like me. You know, I do a little bit of everything because, you know, I'm a woodworker and a metal worker and a mechanic and I just tinker with a lot of things. But right now I'm having fun with this bike. So this is what I got so far. Let me see if I can turn this camera sideways and show you here. I got this template now cut to fit to the inside. Now what I'm hoping is, I don't know if you can see it or not, there's a there's a seam right here and I'm hoping that when I get this piece cut to go on the inside that it fits underneath this seam and fills in the whole bottom area. So it took me a little bit of a few tries. You can see I got a bunch of a bunch of scraps here where I had to keep trimming and I cut a little short on one end and I had to tape one of these pieces back on and and then trim it back down again but I think I finally got it to where it's fitting pretty good now the good thing is is when I cut I'm going to use it as a template and I'm going to lay it on top of this plastic and I'm going to cut this plastic um, now the good thing is is as you can see I have I'm in my wood shop I have a full wood shop I have all kinds of tools so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rip that sheet of plastic down to manageable sizes on my table saw and it'll cut that like butter that's nothing and then when I get it cut out to the proper size and I get the template taped onto the plastic then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use my bandsaw and I'm going to cut it to shape on the bandsaw and then if need be I can come over here and I can use my disc sander to do the final shaping on it. Now, I understand everybody doesn't have a full wood shop like I do. So, what could you do? Well, you could cut this plastic out, you could lay the template on here, tape the template on here, and you could cut that plastic out with just a jigsaw. Um, and then if you needed to do any final shaping, you could use a woodworker's file or a woodworker's rasp. A rasp might be a little bit rough, but let's just say a, a coarse file. Um, and you could do the final shaping on it um, with a file. And then if you wanted to take it a little bit further, you could sand all the edges round with um, uh, just a, you know, a, a random orbit sander or sandpaper or whatever the case may be. So you don't have to have all the stuff that I have in my shop. I'm just kind of blessed that I do have this shop, so um, I'm going to have at it here, and, uh, and I'll get back to you in a little bit. Okay, so I got two pieces cut here. Um, this is high-density polyethylene. They're also just called HDPE. Now, when I was shopping for this, you know, first I was going to use quarter-inch plywood. You know, a quarter inch plywood would have worked on the inside okay because it would have been out of the weather but on the outside I didn't think that it was going to be very very sturdy and would hold up over time so I thought well maybe I'll use uh, plexiglass but the plexiglass in a quarter inch thick piece was pretty expensive it was about forty dollars for a small sheet and I can't remember the what the size of the sheet was but it was it was kind of pricey it was about the size of the HDPE that I bought but 
the HVPE was way less money. It was like it was like $21 or $31, something like that. And I got it at Menards. And it's almost quarter inch thick. And the good thing about it versus even like plexiglass is it's flexible. It won't bend, it won't crack, it, you know, it won't shatter. Uh, so it's going to be a little more forgiving. It's black, so it'll match the bike. I won't have to paint it. It won't get scratched off. So this is what I got. I got, so far I've got two pieces here. And let's see what we got. We got uh, seven inches by roughly 13 and a half in the template. It'll fit right on here. All right. So what my plan is to do now is I'm going to tape these two pieces together so I've only got to cut them one time. And I'm going to tape this template onto this as well and I'm going to use this as the pattern. Uh, being that it's black, a pencil line is not going to show up on it and I don't have a white pencil so I'm just going to use the template as my guide. So I'll show you what that's going to look like when I get this done. Alright, so now I'll show you how I'm going to cut this out on the bandsaw. And this stuff just cuts like butter. It's it's super soft. It's so easy from this bandsaw. So I'm going to turn it on. And I'm just going to follow the pattern. shape so I'll peel all this tape off and then I'll sand these edges smooth I mean this isn't too bad you can actually use it just like this I said this stuff cuts so easy that's just marks from the bandsaw on there um, but this really isn't too bad okay so I sanded this down on the disc sander and I test fit it inside the bag and I'm pretty happy with that. It fits pretty good. Not exactly perfect in the corners, but for what it's going to do, it's going to be just fine. And the other thing that's nice about this is once this is all done, this is also going to keep stuff from pounding the hell out of the frame rails on the bike because, well, it's like I'm going to have stuff like this in there. You have my foldy lock. And when you put that in there and it's bouncing around, it's not going to beat on the frame rails of the bike. It's going to beat on this plastic pad that's on the inside. I got some other accessories I'm going to be putting in here. 
I got the tool bag it's going to go in there and then I'm going to have another an auxiliary battery in here so this is all going to protect the bike and it's going to be much more you know firmly mounted so what the plan is now and this is tight to get in and out because it's double thickness so let me see if I can get this out of here so what the plan is now is to this is only going to be single thickness I'm going to tape one of these to the bottom they're stuck there we go I'm going to tape one of these to the bottom to kind of hold it in place and then I'm going to set it on the frame rail of the bike and I'm going to mark it underneath with a silver marker because this is black not much is going to show up on it where I'm going to drill some holes for some zip ties so what's going to happen is this piece is going to go on the bottom this piece is going to go on the inside and once I get all the holes marked and drilled it's going to actually sandwich the bag and it's going to hold the bag in place and the mean that the bars are are tapered it's going to also help to hold it in place because you're going to have I'm going to put like six zip ties in it and it should be much more secure it's not going to roll around and it's going to give me a, a much better place to you know store my accessories so um, that's the next step I got to go find my silver marker I think it's out in the garage and uh, get this marked up and get some holes drilled All right, so here's the layout that I did. Uh, I just set it on top of the frame rails and I made some marks and you can see these are, are the representations of the frame rails and I decided to go with you know, four zip ties per rail except for this one. I think I'm just going to put one from here all the way across because it's, it's so tight read in there to try to drill a hole and get a zip tie through it. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this off and I'm going to tape them together and I'm going to drill all the holes all at once through both pieces okay so here's the next step I got the two pieces taped back together so I can drill the holes I'm going to drill them all at once I got my black zip ties and I picked out a drill bit and I think about a quarter inch on this drill bit will be about right it'll give me a little bit of an extra extra space a little wiggle room to get things lined up and get the zip ties fished through so the next step is I'm going over to the drill press over there and I'm going to drill these holes with the drill press. There again, you don't need a drill press, but I have one, so I'm going to use it. Okay, so I have all my holes drilled. And while I was at it, I figured on the inside of this, I didn't want to see just, you know, the zip ties. This is what you're going to see on the inside. And you're not going to see all those marks and everything, but you're going to end up seeing the zip ties going across here. And I didn't want to have that. So I have this piece of foam. And basically what I used this for was I used this for uh, drawer liners in my toolbox. And, um, you know, keep stuff from sliding around. See, do I have them in here? No, it's not in this box. It's in a different box. Never mind. So anyway, I used them for drawer liners in one of my toolboxes. And um, it works well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this out with a pair of scissors. So once I get this all attached down back onto the bike, I can lay this down on the inside and it'll cover up all the zip ties and you won't see it. And it'll also give, you know, a little bit of cushion for whatever's inside. It'll keep it quiet and keep it from rattling around. Okay, so here's the next step. How do I drill all these holes through this bag? Now I know it's not going to want to drill because it's just fabric. And what happens when you try to drill fabric? It just gets all twisted up around on the drill bit. So my plan is, is to just use this all. And I'm going to heat it up with this torch. And hopefully just melt my way through this so that these holes will line up. So, here we go. Let's see how this works. Turn the torch on. Is there any propane in this? I, or, I think so. There we go. 
get the lock on. Let's get this hot. It's gotta be. It will change color, so that's probably hot. Oh yeah. Black butter. It works quicker than your own. I don't know how else I would mark it. Stage of burning plastic. I don't really take much heat. Smells really bad. Okay. Let's see what the bottom looks like. Not bad, right? Ow! That thing's hot. So that should match up good. Let's see how this how this sits on there. Perfect. I can see right through the holes. Alright. So now this should allow me to zip tie this thing down to the bike. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. The bike's over here. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and get this zip tied on. Alright, so I just used a pair of scissors. Cut that foam out. And now I laid it down inside. So now it looks nice and clean. And that is a solid, solid bottom. It's not going to beat up the bike. It's not going to beat up my gear. So that's pretty cool. Let me show you what I'm putting in here so far. Alright, so this is everything that's going to end up going in there. I got my foldy lock, and this thing's kind of heavy. So, you know, it's, to me it was really important to do this upgrade because there's really no place on the bike to mount it that I feel comfortable with it. I don't want it mounted to the frame because it would kind of, there's no good way to do it. And it would just end up sliding around and tearing up the paint on the frame. So I got my toolkit that came with the bike. And in that toolkit I'm also going to put some tire irons. I got three little tire levers here. A couple of patch kits, a little tiny emergency bike pump, which, I don't know, I may get another one later on, but for now, uh, this one will do. It's, it's a giant, so it, it, it'll work. This is the rain fly. That'll end up going in there, and the divider will still work. So I'm going to get all this stuff stashed in there, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. Well, here's the next thing that I'm doing on the e-bike. I'm my aerial rider. I got this uh, uh, horn and alarm kit. It has two remotes for the horn and a USB cord to charge it. Uh, it's a pretty nice little, little setup here. Let's see if I can get this to focus on that. All right, so I already got, got it mounted on the bike. If you come over here, I mounted the horn button on the left side and you can barely see it because it's black and it blends right in but it gives me enough room for my hands and yet if I want to put my you know hit the horn button it's plenty loud and you can see it over here I mounted it on the bike 
Now it has a really big, really wide mounting bracket and it's really made to go around the frame but it didn't fit well here because of the headlight and everything but this is what the clamp is actually made to go around plus on the aerial rider it's such a big tube i don't know if it would really go around it the next option would be right here around one of these ring spacers and there again i just thought you know what it's not going to be a good fit uh, because the stem for the handlebar fits sticks out too far and I didn't know if it would interfere with that so what I did is I just mounted it on the, the fork tube and it fits perfect there and so up on top it's, it's easy to access the little charging port and it's just a USB-C and the light goes red when it's charging and then it changes color to I think blue when it's all charged up um so that's all there was to to installing it now it has an alarm built into it which i haven't played with yet but uh i will um i think that's kind of cool too but the big thing is is yeah now i have a nice nice loud horn because this is going to be used mostly as a, a commuter bike and i'm not going to be on the bike paths with it so um i wanted a louder horn so the next thing is that I'm going to work on is this. I don't like that. This is, it's really wobbly. Um, it's just got a couple little Velcro straps that attach it on the bottom. Now I like the idea of the bag and I have some plans for using of this bag, but I don't like the way it mounts. Um, so there was another fella on YouTube uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he's in the Detroit area like myself. Um, he's got a couple of these bikes. Uh, his bike is red. And um, he he did a little tutorial on, on how he stiffened this bag up. So I'm going to take his idea and add to it a little bit. And what I did is I went to uh, Menards and I found this black... HDPE, which is high density, high density polyethylene, and it's a 0 0.220 thickness, so it's almost a quarter inch thick, and it's really uh, pretty, pretty stiff. So I'm going to use this as a stiffener inside the bag, and uh, I'll show you in a little bit, you know, what my plans are for that and how it's going to work out. So um, I'll be back shortly.